Still a whole lot more that needs to be done. The resurrection does not automatically prove divinity. This is not a point that I think is pressed enough. For instance, let me give you an example. Imagine I were to say to you uh, that um, rape is sometimes permissible if the victim is attractive enough. What would you think of me if I said such an awful thing? You'd think I was some kind of moral monster. But then I say, oh, no, sorry, I forgot to mention, I, I rose from the dead the other day. Are you going to be any more convinced by my moral claim? I don't think so. Uh, and this is even if I were to prove that I'd risen from the dead. If I say, yeah, you should, you should trust my moral claims, and you should trust my extraordinary historical claims and truth claims, if I claim that the earth is flat or whatever it may be, simply on the basis of the fact that I rose from the dead, I don't think you'd be able to convince. And that's even if I was able to prove to you that I had risen from the dead. What we're dealing with is not just a, a case where we know someone's risen from the dead, but where we have maybe some good reason, maybe not to believe that he might have risen from the dead. Uh, and, and all that we have to, to support that is something along the lines of, well, the disciples seemed to think so. Uh, according to whom? Well, of course, according to uh, the gospel. That's a question I'd also like to ask um, Jonathan, is if you have any extra biblical evidence. And by extra, I don't mean extra biblical, please. I mean <laughs> extra biblical evidence. Alrighty, here we are, and there's all my NFL highlight videos that I watch when I should be doing homework. Um, Josh, what are your thoughts on this final clip? I mean, I think uh, his analogy to rape is completely flawed because I mean, it it, it has the hidden pre premise that someone who could rise from the dead could also make such a statement, which I don't think is necessarily the case because if someone could rise from the dead, I think they're pretty, they're God, and if if they're God, then they're perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, I think this is a point where if you talk to Alex now, he's going to have changed his mind. Because I think in some video he talks about like the idea that like um, like the common atheist claims like maybe I'd believe in like the Christian God, but I wouldn't worship him. Like he like I think Alex in one of his videos dismisses that and says that's a bad argument because if God is perfect as like Christians typically define him, then like that argument's just not going to work. Um, so that's what I was literally going to say. It's just like, yeah, if we define God as, well, not if we define God, but if God is perfect, is like tradition and um, just like understandings of God traditionally like believes, then like he's perfect. And like, it doesn't really, it's not going to be like a, an issue. So yeah, that was all I really had on that. So you have anything else, Josh? I think, yeah, I, I, I think the point that you raise is definitely very true. And I think, I think the point that Alex, or, or perhaps another interpretation of Alex's text is saying, well, if someone rose from the dead, is that truly a claim to divinity? And I think this idea perfectly illustrates the parable of Lazarus and multiple other points in the Bible, such that where they say when when atheists critique the, the writers and say, well, God hasn't provided enough evidence. Well, the clear response here is, well, even if God provided you every single evidence you needed to know that God exists, you still will not believe in God. Because if Alex is saying here that someone rising from the dead would still not convince him of someone's divinity, I honestly don't know what else God could possibly do to convince someone that there's he is divine. You can see him appearing on the sky. A lot of people like to say, well, oh, if I see some certain writings on the wall or writings in the sky, I'll believe in God. Well, I mean, we've, we've seen a lot of atheists dismiss similar claims in the Bible saying that's just a hallucination. So it doesn't, to me, at least seem it's possible for anyone to to actually find a situation where the the Christian could actually prove any any good reason for God to exist without the atheist just throwing out one of his millions of arguments to just, oh, dismiss it as a hallucination or this or that or whatever, because nothing's ever going to convince them. So I think that this point of Alex, just or at least this other interpretation, is just a case uh, to prove that no matter what God does, they'll always be able to find a way to disprove it. As a result, there is no problem of this hiddenness problem.